Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We believe at Deep Adventure Ministries that the most radical thing you can do in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. Uh, earlier this year, my wife and I went on a real wild trip from through North Dakota and through Montana, and we have as our guest today, Father Corey Nelson. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Earlier this year, my wife and I flew into Bismarck, North Dakota, and went to Wilton, where my father was born and raised, and to Valva, and then on to Powers Lake, where I was born. They don't have a shrine uh, to me anywhere there, but they, they, were, they were very carefully kept, the baptismal font in the, back, in the back that I was baptized in, this little bitty font, and I suppose someday they'll make it a great shrine. I don't know. No, but there is a shrine there. And uh, uh, there's, uh, there's uh, the, in, in the high school, there's, there's a trophy case, and there's lots of trophies in there that my dad, when he was the basketball coach there, he and his teams won. And so that, that was just a great experience. But Cindy and I went through the Dakotas, down into the Badlands, down into Sturgis, up to Glacier Park, Montana, down into Yellowstone and over to Boise. And when we were at Glacier Park, we prayed, Lord, please let us see a moose, a mountain lion, a bear, a buffalo, a fox, um, antelope, uh, elk, and on and on and on. And uh, but we decided, Lord, please let us see the mountain lion and the grizzly bear from inside the car. <laughs> but we but we saw we saw all those. We saw everything, I think, except for a mountain lion. And uh, the, the thing the thing you know one thing's very interesting is God said people say I want to get out to nature, I want to get out where it's peaceful and it's beautiful and and just get close to God. Well, nature's pretty gnarly. You know, those animals are out to kill each other, and it's pretty, it's pretty gnarly out there, and it's pretty wild, and God is wild. Uh, I think there's a, a statement from in Aslan where, uh, where the, someone asked the little girl, well, is Aslan a nice, nice lion? I forget exactly what, what she said about Aslan, but he said, she said he's a good lion, but he's far from safe. And that's the way the Lord is. Lord, the Lord, God is, is fearsome. And, and, and he, he made this great universe. It's wild. The black holes out there are just wild. And nature is wild. And so if you want to get close to God, you want to get close to nature, get ready for a ride of your life because abandoning yourself to God's will is about the greatest adventure you could ever have. And we have with us today Father Corey Nelson, who is the pastor of not one, not two, but three Catholic churches in the Dakotas. Hey, Father, good to see you again. Good to see you, Bear. Yes, good to be on here with you. Well, we 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 want to we want to ask you this question because one thing's really obvious when you're in the Dakotas is that mm -hmm. the people in the Dakotas they either are hunting or they're fishing. Uh, and, and I just want to ask yes. you: Do you like to kill stuff? Or I do, I do. Yes, I take I take the scriptures very seriously when God gave us dominion over the the birds in the air and the fish in the sea and all that. So. No, it's a it's a great a great beautiful hobby of, that we have in the Dakotas. Obviously, many places, but uh, one thing here we love to do is hunt and fish. So, uh. well, we were there in Powers Lake, Father, and there was a little boy out there with three friends fishing in Powers in the mm -hmm. lake, Powers Lake. Yep. And he brought out this huge fish. I, I I think you I think I mentioned it to you. You were guessing that it was mm -hmm. what? What were you thinking it was? Well, I think it was a northern pike, probably, which is a our state fish, and they're very plentiful in the lakes around here they're big yep yep they, we call them slew sharks they're they're big long fish they can get you know up to 40 pounds or more and they're kind of like a musky you know um same probably family and um yeah they can get big big teeth on them and uh they're a fun fish to catch they let them uh, they're very aggressive they do the death roll kind of like a gator and all they that. do and really when they get caught yeah what's the biggest yep, one you so. caught 
The biggest one, well, I, the one I, I've caught but didn't land was easily, you know, probably 25 pounds. <laughs> I was wow. on ice fishing one time and had him under the hole. I could see him. He was massive. I couldn't get his head up through the hole, though. He was too big, and he ended up breaking the line. No so. kidding. He yeah. was too big for the for the ice fishing hole. For the ice hole that I, uh, I couldn't get him up through the hole. So. Well, this is the first lesson we've learned from Father Corey. Always make your ice fishing hole big. <laughs> Bigger. <laughs> Bigger. Yeah. You know, I got invited to go speak in Erie, Pennsylvania. Of course, I always get invited to speak in those northern areas in the middle of the winter. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah. hey, I'll take you ice fishing. And I go, I don't think so. I don't know if I'm man enough for that. So uh, so I, I've, I've been out in an ice house once, and it's more like a, yeah. a man cave. Were you inside an ice house or out, out exposed to the elements? Uh, I was actually out exposed to the elements that day. Yeah, And yeah, I usually have a... Uh, these days a house but that was back when i was probably just out of high school so yeah we were you with a buddy were you with a buddy i was with a high school buddy at the time yeah. so so you guys still talk about the one that got away well we do once in a while yeah but we have other stories since then you know of other fish so like what let's hear let's hear let's hear uh, a good one well, let's hear let's hear uh, a true are, one yeah uh, walleye is a big fish here, and that's our one that we really like to keep and eat. Um, so we got some nice big walleye here, and uh, yeah. So we we've had. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I mean, I've I caught one that I had about ten pounds on my wall, which is a pretty good size walleye, uh, but it's not the biggest. Obviously, there's there's a lot bigger ones here, and um, they're again a nice. Uh, they're um, I don't know what, what you would say, just kind of a. They have a lot of spines on their top and on their fins, and they can cut you up and big teeth on them as well. And are they the kind that you so, troll for, or do you do you do yep. you cast for them? We I, do both. So d depending on the time of the year. So if you're like winter fishing, if you're um, uh, early spring, you usually jig with a minnow, um, and then later in the summer you'll troll uh, with uh, either a crankbait or a spinner or something like that. How good that. are you at uh, the, the, those elect those boats that have those electric engines? You got to run them with your, your well, foot pedal. And yeah, yeah. So like an electric motor. Yeah we, yeah. we do have that. Um, it's, it's not that hard, I guess, once you get used to it, but yeah, it's controlling it on windy days where it becomes an issue. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah. And uh, wal walleye, <laughs> I know I've caught a couple walleye. They're really, uh, you really got to yeah. describe what it takes to, the uniqueness of the way the, owl, the walleye bites a hook. Yeah, well, they 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 either hit it hard or they're very I don't know finicky, where they'll just kind of suck on the minnow or the worm, and they'll bite right behind the hook, and they'll. So you got to be very. It's a finesse kind of fishing sometimes with them. Either they're going to hit it hard and it's easy to catch them, or you'll feel just little taps on the line, and uh, you really have to wait and let them take it. Or you yeah, you got to wait. You got to have a good pull where you can feel the sensitivity of it, where uh, you have to wait until you can actually feel that little strike where they got the hook in their mouth. And then, <laughs> so yeah, there is a, a finesse to it too at times, but there really sometimes is. they just eat it and they just swallow it whole. So. Yeah, yeah, I know there, but, but I remember it because you, when you, when you feel a fish hit or, you know, when you yeah. feel a fish on line, you want to set that hook, but with a walleye, you got to be yeah. a little bit patient. We're talking yeah, with Father yeah, Corey sometimes. Nelson. He likes to kill things. Uh, you know, you and Mitch Paco, Father Mitch, we get along so good. We sure. were over at Father Mitch's house. Uh, I took Cindy there one time, and uh, mm -hmm. he's got one wall with all, well, two walls of all these books, you know, and then the rest mm -hmm. of the walls all have animal heads on them. But I know he loves, yeah. he loves to fish yeah. too. But once I told him that my wife used to be in the rodeo, then he didn't talk to me mm -hmm. anymore. He just talked to he just talked to Cindy. But what about? I mean, <laughs> there, there's one of the things Cindy said about the Dakota men is they're men. I and mean, yeah. everyone there is very hardy people. You got to be. Mm -hmm. You can't be a wuss and survive in the Dakotas. No, you got to be. That's for sure. It, it, it's describe describe one of the cold. Have you ever been in a situation where you were in the cold and you were concerned concerned that you might not make it? Uh, yeah, yes and no. So not so much necessarily with the uh, the cold, like just being out in the cold. Uh, but one time, well, I, I could have many stories to tell you about falling through the ice on lakes and things well, like that. Well, I hear that, that. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that was probably the one time I was really concerned is when I actually fell through when I was out hunting, uh, going after a goose I shot that was laying out on the ice. And it was it was right around Thanksgiving time, so the ice was very thin yet. And mm. uh, I was just a stupid, naive high school kid. Uh, went out there to get the goose that I shot. Um, and as I got out there, the ice was 
only it was less than an inch thick i didn't know that and uh went through and thankfully it was only up about up to my neck in water so i was able to kind of bust through with my elbows the ice to get back up to the shore but it was so cold out that day um i couldn't even get the i couldn't get the keys out of my pocket hardly to open my car door and it yeah. Was just, yeah it was nuts and I, the car thankfully my grandmother lived close by where i could get back quick and get the clothes off and and get next to a heater but yeah i was i my hands are freezing up and everything and i was a little scared there we don't really care about that but we care about the goose did you get the goose (laughs) i did get the goose that was the funny thing now looking back at it it was like i had the goose in my hand and i was in the water with my uh arm up on the ice and i remember throwing the goose (laughs) and then busting through with my uh with my elbows (laughs) to get up closer and then i grabbed the goose again throw him up and start busting through it was all adrenaline going at that time was your shotgun still on the shore uh no i actually had it in my hand so yes i had it in my left hand and so i threw i think i threw that up and then I started busting through, and then yeah, and I'd throw the gun, wow. throw the goose up, and keep busting through. But yeah, that was a that was a, a experience. For this sure. is a day in the life of, <laughs> of, of Father Corey Nelson, who's the the pastor of three parishes uh, in the Dakotas. Yeah. What are the, what are the three parishes? Uh, so we got St. Michael, the Archangel Parish, and Ray, which is a small town. So we're up in the oil patch of North Dakota, Northwest North Dakota. Uh, so there's a lot of oil activity up here. Um, so Ray. Uh, is my furthest west and then in between uh, in the middle where i live in tioga uh which is saint uh, thomas the apostle parish and then uh to the north <clears throat> east of here uh i have saint powers lake the place where you were born and and uh, baptized at saint james parish so well we'll be right back we're talking with father Corey nelson this is the bear wasnick adventure we're going to talk more about his adventures uh but not so much about hunting hunting and fishing but uh, but his spiritual journey and and what it's like being a priest in a remote part of the Dakotas. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan LaBoon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Buckaroo. What brand do folks put on you? No doubt some good and some bad. Lots of terms for cowboys, cow hand, cow poke, cow puncher, ranch hand, herder, Brush popper, never heard that one, did you? And buckaroo. Was a time in Arizona when cowpokes resisted being called cowboys due to the outlaw gang known as the Cowboys, who notoriously tussled with Wyatt Earp, his brothers, and Doc Holliday. From dime novels, the popularity of rodeos, and Hollywood producing western movies, the term cowboy rose to the top and stuck. I do admit having a personal liking for buckaroo. Has a certain feel when you pronounce it, with a sort of wholesome tune when you get to the roo and buckaroo. Herders were multi ethnic. Most trail drivers were veterans of the Civil War, Confederate, and Union, with somewhere in the neighborhood of 25% being freed slaves. Others were European immigrants, Mexicans, and American Indians. Christianity is indeed multi ethnic. Bible types called by a number of names, some good and some not so good. Essentially, Christian means little anointed ones or followers of Christ. We've been called hypocrites, fundies, Bible bashers, hateful, and so on. Sometimes deserved, sometimes not. Not to worry. The key is following and imitating Christ in word and deed. Jesus said we would be known by the fruit we bear. Hopefully our fruit looks wholesome to others because, well, it it is wholesome. Keep in mind, though, our fruit will be ultimately judged by Christ alone, not others nor our culture. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Men, our 36 months of lessons in our new School of Manliness and our non-Facebook Man Cave community provides you with the grit and traction that you need to pursue virtue. You will have a full toolbox with all of our Long Ride Home TV series, all the video versions of the Bear Wozniak Adventure Radio Show, Bear's Daily Catechism in a Year video podcast, the Catholic Biker Daily Rosary, plus access to much, much more, all available on our smartphone app and on your PC. Go to deepadventure.com and join the new school of manliness. Deepadventure.com. 
This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome back to the to our show. We have Father Corey Nelson with him. He's a priest in the northwest kind of sector of North Dakota. Uh, and we want to invite all the men there to our school of manliness. Uh, you can go to deepadventure.com and sign up, and you become a member of Bear's Man Cave. But then you also begin a personal journey through a three-year cycle um, of, of being trained in manliness on the seven virtues and the 12 rules that we've laid down and you become and, and other men walk alongside you you have an adventure guide to walk, walk alongside you and you you encourage each other and challenge each other and you grow and you grow deeper in the Lord and uh, and so go to deepadventure.com and, and join the pack we uh, we uh, we're just a bunch of knuckle draggers you don't have to be holy if you if you're too holy you probably need to go someplace else but if you're like us uh, all kind of bunch of knuckle draggers like we just say we're all bozos on the same bus if you're like us then you can uh, then you can become part of our uh, part of the deep adventure dot com bears man cave we're talking with father uh, Corey Nelson from Northwest North Dakota he's the pastor of three churches there we love the people there but we didn't get to go get the what 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 is the woman's name again who's the church secretary and I believe she also yeah, has Jenny, a Jenny yep yeah. Jenny, Jenny uh, she was yeah she she's no longer the, uh, working here but yeah she's very much a part of the parish still, what did so. is she the one that has yeah. the coffee shop she does the red moose coffee hoose we call it but, the red yeah, very, moose coffee, coffee hoose so if you're yeah. ever in and that's in Tioga right that one's in Tioga yeah. Yeah. if so we're gonna we're, we're gonna make a mad rush of people going to Tioga to go get some red moose coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's a great, we never got we never got house. to get that coffee. But Father, your uh, yeah. your personal journey towards being a priest uh, in the Dakotas mm -hmm. has got to be really interesting. Can you? Yeah. And you know, one thing is when we went to this church, we went there for a reason because I was baptized there, and we saw Bob Obert. By the way, I just talked to him mm -hmm. this morning. Great. Love that guy. Love that guy. Mm -hmm. I, t I was kidding him because I was talking about buying a Ford or a Chevy, and of course he was a he was a Chrysler Dodge type dealer, you know. Oh, but I love Bob Obert. But shout out to Bob Obert. He was one of my dad's players. My dad was his basketball coach. But we we loved we loved the the people there. But when we were in your in that 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 church, it was really cool to see the families come in. But yep. you know. Within a within a few, when you begin your homily, I go I go to Cindy. Oh, this is a real this 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 priest is on fire for the Lord, and we just yeah, loved it. And the people you. are so grateful for you. Tell us about your personal journey uh, and you sure. know faith journey, and then yeah. and then you yeah. you called to the priesthood. I, I I love to hear these stories. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's all about God's goodness, obviously. And uh, so I grew up in a town. Uh, about 35 40,000 people just west of here uh or east of here sorry in minot north dakota minot. Air base to the north of us yeah yep. well, my wife and i went there to my i think my wife and i went there went, went for for uh dinner and she yep. goes to the women's bathroom and i go do you notice anything yep. she goes no and i go there's this huge buffalo head <laughs> in the yep. restaurant you didn't even notice it but yeah minot my dad sure. went to minot state teachers college oh and, yeah. I, and i and i got okay. my uh, tonsils out there as a young yeah, kid. <laughs> and so did I, actually. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so I grew up in Minot. Um, I was just your typical kid. You know, I loved to play sports growing up. We would always play outside and baseball and things like that in the summers. And I uh, grew up playing hockey and, and then later in life, football, basketball, baseball, all those things. So baseball was being my favorite sport that I excelled in the most. But um but yeah, so growing up, just just a typical kid, you know. Uh, I would go to mass on Sunday uh, with my family. Uh, dad, my dad is still not Catholic, but he's always come to mass with us, actually. And uh, I'm I'm hoping one of these days he's gonna finally take the plunge. But uh, he's he's always faithful going to mass with us. But mom made sure we always got to mass on Sunday mornings, uh, even though if I fought against it or whatever. But uh, I thank God for her today because she's the one that really kept me. We love those in mama bears. We're we're totally yeah, into the mama bears. Yeah, they're fierce. Absolutely, <laughs> they are. And so yeah, just I, I went to mass every Sunday. That was you know I did my prep 
you know, through school years to receive the sacraments and confirmation and first communion, all that. Uh, I served as a kid. You know, I enjoyed doing that. Well, let me, um, let me ask you a question. Never, when you were yeah. confirmed, did the bishop slap you in the face? <laughs> he didn't. So this was after all that, you know, so okay. this is the later. I always thought that was cool because it was like, get ready to fight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And that's exactly what it means. I still yeah. use that analogy today why the bishop slapped people back in the day for confirmation. <laughs> that you, You're now taking on these, these gifts have been given to you by the Holy Spirit. Now be ready to fight for the yeah. Lord. Amen. Be a soldier of Christ. Um, and, but yeah, so I never thought about being a priest. Never wanted to be a priest, I guess. Um, just... Uh, it was probably the furthest thing from my mind. I kind of wanted to grow up, have a family like anybody else, uh, maybe be a coach or something like that because I love sports. And um, <clears throat> But it wasn't until about, I'd say, my freshman year of high school where I went to a Catholic high school in Minot, which was Bishop Ryan Catholic School in, in Minot. And uh, it was there that, you know, we, we are still grounded in our faith. We'd have mass once a week there and we'd go to confession, you know, every semester. And, um, and so it, it kept me grounded in the faith, which was a hu real blessing, I guess, uh, looking back on it. Um, but it, it wasn't that necessarily that really got me to think about being a priest. It was really the Lord. And mm. so about my freshman year, uh, I just remember out of the blue, the thought popped into my mind, you should be a priest. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh, no, no, I'm not going to be a priest. You know, not thinking like, <laughs> it was just thinking it was just a dumb thought or something like that. Um, and it was just, it was like a crazy time because I was like freshman year, you know, I was enjoying high school, enjoying sports, all that. And then all of a sudden, just this thought comes to my mind. And once that thought came, it never left. <laughs> it, it started coming back. So earlier on, uh, it would come, you know, the thought would come back like every you know, maybe month or so. Um, and, and I was, I didn't really think anything of it at first, but then after it started to happen more and more frequently and, and it got closer and closer together, that, that thought or that call, uh, it started to worry me a bit. And it was funny around the time, that time, you know, maybe a couple months after I received that initial kind of tug at my heart, uh, my grandfather, who I looked up to, a very good Catholic man, at the, and um, he he just kind of out of the blue started telling people when I'd be out with him, you know, this is my grandson, Corey, he's going to be a priest someday. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, what? You know, like, no, no, <laughs> grandpa, he's, he's, he, don't listen to him. I'm not going to be a priest, you know, whatever. And I just thought, what is going on here? Right. So I'm thinking this, my grandpa starts saying this to people when I'm out. Um, the call starts to get stronger and stronger and I'm in high school and I'm just thinking, what is going on? And, uh, and I just think, you know, well, it's just maybe just a stupid thought or something that's just going to go away, but it never went away. And mm. it only got stronger as I progressed through high school. Um, and I just remember thinking, I knew, I knew exactly who it was that was speaking to me. And it was like, it got to be more uh, personal where it was like, Corey, I want you to be my priest. And, and I'm just like, uh, no, <laughs> I would do like anything I could to like get that out of my mind, you know, my thought. and and it just it, the call got stronger and stronger, and and I ran from it, and I ran from it, and uh, and I just remember thinking with God, and I started pleading with Him, and it's like, I'm in high school, how can I be a priest? <laughs> you know, it's like like that's not even possible right now. So it's like, can't you just like let me do it or call me later or sometime in life or something like that, trying to push it off, right? Um, and it just never went away. And then I remember pleading with God, well, I could be a deacon, you know, and at least I could still get married and all this. And he's like, it just, it kept coming back to me. No, I called you. I want you to be a priest. And I'm just like, oh, you know, so I, I did whatever I could. I was a lot like, you know, many of the prophets in the scriptures who just ran from God's call and didn't want to do it. And they're like, Lord, choose somebody else. Somebody's better speaker than I am or, or whatever. And, and it's just, the Lord just kept making it clear to me, no, this is what I'm calling you to. And it's not you who will do this. It's me who will do it through you. Right. Um, but that was a fearful thing for me because it's like yeah, to take that plunge. Uh, it was I just I was so afraid of it. And I didn't think I not only was I not worthy of it, but I didn't think I would be good at it. And uh, so I so I pushed it off, graduated, went to college for a year or so out of high school. And I knew exactly at that time what uh, God was calling me to. It was very clear to me. Nobody had to tell me or I didn't have to ask anybody who is this speaking to me, <laughs> you know, or is this, am I going crazy? I knew exactly who it was. I knew it was the Lord. And that was, I just, I was that convicted. Um, and, and so as I went through, 
that time out of high school, the, the call just got more intense where it was like, it was, I was thinking about it every day. It wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> He's like the hound of heaven. Uh, exactly. With me. Yeah. And, uh, and it just, it, he kept pursuing me and, and he basically just wore me down over time. But really what got <laughs> me, I think was towards that, the end of those, let's say those last couple of years before I finally said yes, uh, the Lord started really making himself known to me in very powerful ways. And, and I just remember like, you know, I didn't quit praying during that time, even though I might have drifted away from the, the faith a little bit at the time, just to kind of probably avoid God's call, because <laughs> I didn't want to hear that I have to be a priest someday, uh, not realizing what a great blessing it is. Looking back now, obviously, I'm grateful for that call and that God didn't give up on me so easily. But um, but yeah, during that time, just there would be moments when I would be before bed, I'd still do my prayers, pray Hail Mary, whatever, um, that the Lord, he, he would just make his presence so known to me like his, God. I, I could just feel him in the room it was just like he'd descend upon me mm -hmm. and it was so strong it was like it was eerie it was like there's somebody somebody's there i can feel it you know like yeah. i can feel a presence there uh and it was just it kind of terrified me because i've never felt that before you know but yet it, there was such a peace with it that when it Amen. came and yeah. uh and uh and so i and well, I we, got, we, got, we, that, got, the, we got to take a hard break so this sure. is a good place to stop. We'll hear, we'll hear what, yep. what happens next. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, we'll be right back with more with Father Corey Nelson, the, pa the priest of three parishes in northwest Dakota. There's a song my wife Cindy shared with me that goes, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? We don't need more nice guys. What the world needs is good men. Men who don't apologize for pursuing manly virtue. Men who willingly step into the role of protector, provider, and servant leader. We created the School of Manliness just for men like you. Join our school and our non-Facebook Man Cave community, all available on our smartphone app and on your PC. Go to deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. We want to welcome the Mama Bears. We have a new secret Facebook group for the Mama Bears, too. It's moderated by Shandy Burke. And um, so many of you have joined the Mama Bears, you know, because you, re you like to receive the YouTube versions of all of our TV shows, sometimes a year earlier than the network uh, will air the motorcycle show Long Ride Home, or you like to receive uh, the video version of, the, uh, of our radio show two months before it airs on EWTN. So and you just like to support the ministry. And you, you Mama Bears are kind of somewhat, you're, you're relentless. <clears throat> And you want the men in your family to uh, come to go deeper with the Lord. And you know that our ministry is something that they can really latch on to. So when we send you those videos of the of the Long Ride Home TV show, you can just accidentally have those on TV or the podcast on or something when they, they come in. And we just really love you and, 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 and uh, want to invite you to become part of the ministry. Um, you're, you're fierce. Your, your, love, your love for your ohana is fierce. So, um, you know, we, we uh, have as our guest today, Father Corey Nelson, and he's sharing with us about his call to the priesthood. I've got to tell you something that kind of broke my parents' heart, Father. Father Corey is the pastor of three parishes in, Northwest, in the Northwest Dakotas. When I was young, my mom and dad would be so proud. Tell, tell everybody what you want to be when you grow up. And I would say, please. And they thought I was saying priest. But finally, when I got old enough, I would say police. 
you know, and they go, oh, no. I mean, not that that isn't a great profession, but but they were like, no, we want, we thought you were saying you wanted to be a priest. So so I was a big disappointment to them. But so, so <laughs> the, the thing about this, the sense of, you know, Father, I'm going to tell you, when I was filming Long Ride Home, yeah. it was an overwhelmingly difficult challenge, probably the greatest, sure. great spiritual warfare, too. And we were in a church yeah. in uh, Houston halfway through our ride, and I had one of those moments where the Holy Spirit just came. You know, mm-hmm. and, and 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 made himself known to me. But you know, there's there's a verse that says, if we, when we go to heaven, that Jesus will look at us and say, you know, enter into the kingdom. Or he may say these words, mm-hmm. depart depart from me, for I never knew you. Yeah. It's not whether we know God; it's does He know you? Do you spend time mm-hmm. with Him, yeah. and let His face shine upon you? And you were spending that kind of time. You were you're doing mm-hmm. that prayer, and you would just sense the Holy Spirit just come upon you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, then was, what was your response to that? Well, so uh, the first initial times it was, it was, it was kind of frightening to me because I didn't, I've never experienced the Lord that way, I should say. Uh, but then again, like I said, there was always a peacefulness with it. It wasn't like a terrifying thing, but yet it was terrifying because I've never experienced that. Um, and it was always, a, the Lord was always so gentle. And I just remember in those moments when I would feel his presence so strongly, I could very clearly hear him speaking in my soul, right? And uh, and it was it was obvious to me who it was, right? And and all I could remember hear him saying to me is, "Please, Corey, be my priest. I want to make you happy. Please be my priest." Wow! Right? Wait a minute! Uh, yeah. Wait a minute! <laughs> yeah. Be my priest. I want to make you happy. Yeah. That's a key. Your Aristotle says we should pursue happiness. Aquinas says we should pursue happiness, yeah. and God wants us to be happy, but He's designed us. Like you have a good dog, right? Is your dog a good dog? Yep, he is, is a good dog. He, he's a good dog when he does doggy things, right? Yep, absolutely. Well, and he's happy when he does that. Well, you, yep. when you, as a priest, nothing could make you happier because you're designed for that. Absolutely. Yep. I'm sorry to absolutely. interrupt you, but that was. A, can you say again what 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 the sense was that you would hear? What was it again? So it, it was yeah, it just like you know, Corey, please be my priest. I want to make you happy. That's such That's a profound what kept statement. To me. So profound. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it, absolutely true. I know now, looking back, yeah, he knew what he's talking about. Obviously, he created me for a purpose and it was to be a priest. But uh, at the time, I didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, I knew that, but I didn't want to know that. Yeah. Um, because I knew, obviously, like everybody, we think we know what's going to make us happy, what'll make what's best for us, but we really don't know anything. Obviously, God knows us better than we know ourselves. Um, so, yeah, so I experienced him that very powerful way. And he, he would just, every so often, that would that sense would come back where I could feel his presence and the same thing. Please, Corey, be my priest. I want to make you happy. Wow. Uh, and then eventually towards the end, as I was getting closer to the point where it's like I knew I was going to have to say yes, at least give this a try because it just, like I said, it got to the point where I couldn't do anything without thinking about it. Like it was so strong on my heart um, that I knew I was just going to at least have to give it a try. <laughs> and uh, um, that I just remember the last time when I was about to say yes to God, um, he came like again like that. Um, and he just, I remember him again very clearly why do you keep running from me? I want to make you happy. Please be my priest. And, and I just like, that just broke me. <laughs> and I just remember <clears throat> just, uh, I just kind of like broke down weeping and I just said, okay, Lord, if this is what you want, your will be done. And, uh, and I just remember in that moment, it was so beautiful, so powerful that I, I just felt like the Lord just held me like a little child in his arms. And I just wept. <laughs> and it's like, I, I've been running so long <clears throat> and I just, just kind of let go and just, let him love me right wow uh and 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 said yes lord your will be done and and it's just it was a very powerful thing and it was just like this huge burden that i'd been carrying for all these years probably about seven eight years that i ran from it uh it just it just could feel it lifting away and it's just like this peace just entered into me that i'd never experienced before and i was just like holy cow <laughs> you know and it was just it was awesome well there's there is that scripture and, verse that says you know per, pursue peace <clears throat> Seek yeah, peace, absolutely. pursue it. When you're when you're when you're seeking God's will, you will feel His peace as you're as you're in His will. You will sense mm-hmm. that you're in the right place. And you said it. You felt yep. this great sense of peace. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly what I felt. And and now, like I said, looking back from that time onward, it was the best decision I ever made. Finally, saying yes to God. Um, that and you look I've happy, Father. More joyful. Thank you look you. happy. I am. From the I moment am. I saw you, you're just a happy priest. Yeah. <laughs> 
and I and I've been happy ever since. Not that we don't have tough days like anybody, obviously, right. but I've never I never lose that sense of joy within me, you know. And and that's the beautiful thing what Jesus has given to me uh, through the priesthood, but also just by giving my life to Him. Uh, is this peace and this joy in me that I can't help but like let out, you know? And so whether it comes out in a smile or, or just a, a joy that I, that I share with others or whatever, uh, it's always been there since I finally said yes to him. And it's just, it's beautiful. And there's, and again, not that I don't experience hardships or, or tough days like anybody, uh, but I know that my Lord is with me. Right. And, and, and I know that he's with me in those good times and in those bad times. So no, father, will you, will and, you uh, stop? So, I'm sorry. Will you stop yeah. and will you stop and pray for people right now who are, God is calling yeah. them to say yes to something? It probably not the priesthood, but maybe it is, but God is calling them to say yeah. yes. Will you, sure. will you pray with them that they would sense that Absolutely. same, the, the, the nudge, they would know where the nudge of the Holy spirit is taking them and, and to say Absolutely. yes, just pray for them. <laughs> okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious Father, you are all good and you are all loving, and we know that you only desire what is our good. And so I just pray for those people right now who might be watching this, who are terrified of whatever the future might hold, who are unsure of what your call is for them in life. I pray that they would just open their hearts to you, Lord, that they would truly know how good you are and that you love them and you only want to make them happy. And so I just pray that they would let down their guard and let you in. So that you may have that your joy might be theirs, and that they're that they might experience the fulfillment and joy that only you can give to them. And so we ask you, Father, to bless all of those people who are struggling in any way, that they might know your love, they might know your peace, and that they are a beloved son and daughter of God. And so we ask this through the intercession of Our Lady. We Amen. pray, Hail Mary, full of grace. The, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, art, blessed thou art thou among women, women and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us. Pray sin. for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. You know, Father, there's Father a son, there's a scripture verse that says, "I know what I have in store for you: plans yes. for peace, not destruction; a future Absolutely. reserved for you, full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me." And then this this caveat: if you seek me with all your heart, I will yes. let you find me. So for those that are are seeking uh go to your go go to your local priest or tune in to ewtn radio or go to our website com or or pick up uh pick up the catholic catechism Woo! Yeah. If you want to go deep and uh start going to to mass more often but if you seek the lord with all your heart he will let you find him but he does hide uh, I, th I think mm -hmm. it was was it c.s lewis i think or maybe it was gk that said I, they're, they're both so much alike um, yep. that God hides himself just enough so the one that is searching for him can find him but that one that doesn't want to find him won't see him so, oh. so seek yep. God but if you, don't, if you don't get an immediate response that's because God isn't a McDonald's drive through you know <laughs> keep pressing exactly. into the Lord um, yep. we're talking with Father Corey Nelson he's the pastor of three parishes in North Dakota what are the names of the three parishes? So St. Michael the Archangel in Ray, St. Thomas the Apostle in Tioga, and St. James the Greater, I guess you could say, St. James in Powers Lake. So. And that's where I was baptized, yeah. in St. James Saint yeah. James in, in, in Power. It was so cool, man, when I would sit and I drove through there and drove down along the, the lake and then kind of meandered around and found the church. And, and, and then we, we were outside kind of like timid, you know, uh, to go in, and then we went in and... We were so greeted so warmly. We're talking with Father Corey Nelson, uh, uh, priest in the Dakotas. Uh, we'll be right back with more Bear Wozniak adventure. But we want to invite you, if you don't subscribe to our email newsletter, you're really missing out. We have a special shout-out for the Mama Bears and a special roar from the Man Cave. One of the members of the Man Cave posts, posts a blog every a different person uh, every week. Uh, powerful stuff, the sort of stuff that takes place in, in the man cave itself. So go to deepadventure.com, sign up for our newsletter, and you get the you get the, the TV, the YouTube version of the radio show sent to you before it even airs on EWTN. And uh, go, to our web, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe, uh, Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, because there you, we've got Ocean Sunrise Catechisms, we've got... Um, all of our all of our podcasts uh we've got so many things going on so uh, we invite you to go to deepadventure.com and become part of the, the the tribe we'll be right back with more of the bear wozniak adventure 
Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. <clears throat> we got to remind everybody, Long Ride Home, uh, the new season is up on EWTN, so we have three seasons up there now. And our next seasons, our next three seasons we're working on, uh, that's the, uh, the Long Ride Home was filmed in Hawaii, so we got three seasons filmed here. If you'd like to uh, bless and be part of supporting our ministry because we only receive funding from you, then go to uh, deepadventure.com and become a Patreon donor. You can find the link where it says support us. We're talking with Father Corey Nelson. He's the priest in, in the northwest corner of the Dakotas, which is just great country. You feel an expansiveness there, and you also feel like you better have your act together if you're going to live here because it, it, can be, it can be rugged. Uh, but, Father, w as you begin to pursue the priesthood, the formation of Catholic priests is so profound. Can you tell us about the formation process? And yeah, it, it was it was amazing. And I, as I tell many people, it's like I love my my years in seminary. Even though at times in seminary you're like you can't wait to be a priest. Obviously, uh, looking back now as a priest, I love being a priest. But it's like you miss those years of formation in seminary because it, they were just so blessed. You know, like you had this opportunity just to to pray to study uh the truths of the faith you got formed uh with this great formation of, of being a man of god first and foremost you know being a child of god um and then how you can bring others to that obviously um so basically what started out we usually have what we it's about an eight-year uh program to become a priest if you don't have a college degree before going in you have eight years really you, you do your four years in college uh where you get your a bachelor's in philosophy so you can learn how to think and reason and do I all think those that, things i think that's so cool yeah. do you know yeah. are you familiar with this book the one in the many by the way is that one the of one your, in the many uh -uh. The one of many no, oh, not, yeah. actually. anyway i just you know peter craft is the only one that can help me understand yeah. philosophy he's but great though i like peter craft yeah i so, just think it's amazing um, that the priests invest that much time in learning how to think come yeah, by this reason which because is it's faith necessary and in reason. today's world obviously yeah. Uh, so yeah, first four years, uh, college seminary, where you're learning more about philosophy and that, but yet you're still getting a little catechism and things like that. And, and ultimately being formed as a man, uh, coming from the world, uh, what it means to be a true man of God, you know, not effeminate, not in any way different, uh, or what the world would say, uh, you have to be or put a label on you. But what does it mean to be not only a child of God, but to be a, a real man? right to, to have a family to be the leader of a family uh to provide for a family um all just very great stuff and so four years of college seminary and if you've had a degree going into seminary usually you do a six-year program which is two years of philosophy uh, and they're called usually pre-theologians um, and then your last four years are theology so you have your major minor seminary which is college major seminary which is uh your theologate and that's where you really go into the intense studies of theology patristics you know so what is patristics uh, tell people what patri law. Tell, tell people what patristics, so patristics are. yeah yeah patristics is great obviously it, it talks about the church fathers the early church fathers so where obviously christ left us his church uh and so we we delve into those early church fathers those ones who probably the ones right after the apostles basically right so the bishops that were ordained after the apostles so like um you think of like uh, cyril of jerusalem and things mm -hmm. like that that these would be the early well, these, church fathers these, who these books really behind, teach the catholic yeah 
These books, there's the, there's the, the, the early church fathers, and then the books yep. over on this side, this is commentaries on, on Scripture. But I was thinking about this the yep. other day, you know, like, the first bad Santa Claus was was Saint Saint Nicholas, wasn't he? He punched Nicholas. out one of the Arians right at the Arian. You're right. You know, <laughs> You're right. They, they were gnarly guys. A lot of them were, were yeah. Polycarp and just a martyr. You know, all these guys they yeah. were they were they a lot of them were martyred. And so I, yeah. I think it, I think nowadays the way things are going, it's not the Nicene Creed. It's just the nice mm-hmm. creed. Be nice. Yeah, exactly. And that's not Be that's nice. not what these men were. They laid down their lives and they fought for the faith. Absolutely. So, so I mean, I, I just love that about it. Let me let me let me move this to another thing. Sure. Moving on from talking about the nice guy, what yep. is versus being a good man? Right. I differentiate between mm-hmm. the two. What yep. is God saying to men today? The guy, a priest from the Dakotas. You know, my <laughs> wife said those yeah. are real men in the Dakotas. Tell tell us. Yeah. Well, obviously, the way God created men were to be the strong protectors, right? The, the providers and the strong protectors. And, and so the man is the priest of his home, right? He's the, the leader, the head that God created that way in a hierarchy of the way he created man. Um, and he did it that way for a reason, obviously. There's, the male is obviously the, the stronger of the sexes, and that there's good reasons. Not because the woman's less than the man. Uh, not the case at all, right? Um, but that God created man in such a way that he would be this provider and protector of his family, as Joseph was the protector of the, the holy family, right? Uh, that he put men in place to protect and provide for his people. Uh, and he sent his son uh, to, to do that for us, obviously, but to lay down his life. And so also to be a man is to lay down your life. Uh, to be willing to be that white knight on the horse, right? To, mm-hmm. to, to save your bride, to be willing to lay down your life for her. Uh, that that is the ultimate act of love that a man can give. And so uh, to lay down your life for your family, for your bride, um, to, to protect, to provide for them, that, that's being a man, right? Um, and, and so that is what the, the culture is greatly lacking today, obviously, is, is manliness. <laughs> and so... You know, I, my new book I'm working on, The Twelve Rules of Manliness, I think I'm going to subtitle mm-hmm. it, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, when you... No, it's true. Yeah, I, I love walking into a church and seeing that young family with a young man that's... They're wrestling with the kids, and my it's it's yeah. kind of funny. My wife loves it when we go to a mass. That she there's some masses that are there's more kids than others. You know, mm-hmm. she loves to go to those masses and hear the hear the kid hear the kids. But the other thing is all all these women that you walk in early to mass and they're all praying the rosary. They have a wedding ring and they're by themselves, and our heart goes out to them. And you 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 friends of Saint Monica, just keep praying for your family, keep praying for your men. Women are like kindling, they start they start on fire easily, but men are like big oaks. It takes them a while. But don't exactly. don't give up on them. Hey father, am I ever gonna get you to bring me out there to, to uh, speak to your men sometime? I really would like to come back. That would be great. I would love to have you out here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we will do that. But we'll not during ice sometime. fishing season. <laughs> yeah. We can do it in the we can do it in the summer or maybe the spring or the fall, but yeah, whatever. How about the but, fall, yeah. yeah. Yeah, can, Paul's beautiful here. Yeah, just bring so. just bring me out. I really I really want to I really want to come. I I don't I miss you guys already. I, I just yeah, no, it was ha- great. It was great having you. You know, you had us. Uh, we were going through the okay. So we're gonna meet here for. I'm gonna I'm gonna be on the deck here, and we're gonna have some some refreshments yeah. at night. And of yeah. course, the night never falls in the Dakotas in the summer. But yeah. Google took us through the most bizarre path you know we were in a rental car that was low yeah. to the ground and we were going through cow pastures and i guess they were official yeah. roads or at least google thought yeah. they were and then That's finally funny. we came up behind the house i go i think this might be it but uh yeah. we we just we just love we just love the people there uh what what are the disciplines uh that a man should have as he pursues pursues his life of faith yeah well obviously you need to be a man of prayer first and foremost, that he needs to be a man of God. Um, to put Christ first in one's life is is the ultimate act of being a man, uh, because we have to realize that even though we are men and we're meant to be strong, and we are weak, and that as St. Paul says, it's where I'm weak that I'm strong, right? Because Christ is my strong fortress, my protector, uh, and without him, I can do nothing. So if we don't have God first and foremost in my life, recognizing that I have a loving Father in heaven, um, and that He He's the provider for me uh, and He protects me, uh, and I don't have that relationship with Him, I can never truly be a, a, a good, strong man. Right? You can be strong and you can be good, but you can't be 
the ultimate good strong man that God created you to be without God first in your life. Beautiful. And so I would say that first and foremost. Yeah. Um, and then you need to be a man who is not for himself, but a man who's willing to to lay down his life for another. You see this in the priesthood, which is so beautiful, the rite of ordination. You see a man mm -hmm. lay down his life for his bride as he gets down and hits the marble with his face down. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful act of I humility. I saw my dad do that which, as a deacon. Yeah, 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 no, it's great. It's a very powerful moment during the ordination ceremony in which the man is really saying it's his life is no longer his own. He's laying down his life for Christ and his church. Um, and and so it, it comes, it'd be, it's always about another, right? So as Christ Amen. laid down his life for us, not because it, it benefited him in any way, it was all for love of the other. And so a real man lays down his life for another. And that's it's not about you him. It's about the we, and we got to cut it, cut it here, Father. We're out of time, but that's why Jesus said, "If you try to say, find your, keep your life, you will lose it. Yep. But if you give Absolutely. away your life, um, you will find it." So a real man gives away his life, and in that act, mm -hmm. he really finds him. He really finds uh, the great joy. You know, whether whether it's to be yep. called as a priest as you are, or or in whatever capacity, but to say yes to God is the greatest adventure anyone could ever have. So, Father, you know, in Hawaii, the word "ha" means uh, breath. And when yep. we say aloha, that means to give breath. And that's what Jesus said, yep. my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. And he breathed yep. his Holy Spirit. So we always sign yep. off with a big aloha. So when I start saying yep. aloha, it's going to be a long aloha, but hopefully you'll join me. All right. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. aloha. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.